the 61st Commission of the Status of Women kicked off early this week and in attendance are representatives of member states, the UN entities and accredited non-government organizations. The Commission on the Status of Women is a principal global intergovernmental body exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and empowerment of women. The Commission of the Economic and Social Council was established by the United Nations Council Resolution of 1948. This year, the main focus is on women's empowerment and to link them to sustainable development goals with the aim of elimination and prevention of all forms of violence against women and girls. During one of the sessions at the United Nations, Uganda Speaker of Parliament Rebecca Gadaga argued that more should be done to address gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls in the member states. The Speaker advocated for more political inclusion of women globally. While Uganda has made considerable progress on the political inclusion of women, the Speaker noted that more needs to be done. We are there in the economic decision making. Who decides what crops will be grown? Who decides what taxes will be paid? Who decides on the, the, on the quantum? All those are areas where women are not involved. So I was telling them that now we need to push further on the economic decision making so that uh, we can empower women both politically and economically. In another session, there was the discussion on the question of the status of indigenous women in the world who experienced consequences of historical injustices and invasion of their territories and faced discrimination because of their distinct cultures, identities and ways of life. In recent years, the international community has given special attention to the human rights situations of indigenous people like the Batwa and the Ik people in Uganda. From this meeting, we are supposed to discuss their conditions now, what are the conditions under which they are living and working and surviving because uh, they used to live uh, entirely in the forest, all their livelihood is in the forest. But when they move out, how do they manage and uh, how is the government supporting them to uh, carry on with their lives? While presenting, Victoria Tauli told the Assembly that some member states should have done enough to incorporate the different indigenous people, especially women. It would only be sustainable if indeed consultation and free prior informed consent is respected and the indigenous women who are the ones who will be affected by this will also be involved in such process. Other speakers stressed the need to address equal access to production resources for indigenous people, including women. Inputs such as land, seeds, financial services, technology, transportation and information. In conclusion, the Speaker of Parliament highlighted challenges faced in achieving their strategic development goals addressing women empowerment. About development goals, there are 17 of them, but goal number five has to do with gender equality and the empowerment of women. We have a tendency to concentrate on the political elections, ETC, but we need to address the economic decision making. The conference at the United Nations headquarters will conclude on the 26th of this month with discussions focusing on women's rights and climate change. One of the most baffling things is that even after the discussions are made, how far can the implementation be made? Now the indigenous women all over the world could be seeing at least a change if the implementation that are being discussed here is put into play. Maurice Chol, NTV, here in the UN Center in New York.